Hey friends, something that you guys may not have seen because it failed miserably over the last couple days was the Committee on Oversight and Reform, chaired by Representative Carolyn Maloney of New York, of course. They had both Ruger and Daniel Defense essentially piped in via the internet, uh, Mr. Marty Daniel and Mr. Kaloy from um, uh, Ruger. This was absolutely a witch hunt. That's all it was. They cut these gentlemen's time short whenever these gentlemen were not giving the answers that the chairperson wanted. They cut them short, and she was trying to get these men to slip up to take some responsibility for something that was not of their making. These guys simply made firearms, and bad people bought them and committed crimes with them. She was trying to get them to take responsibility for that. Now, before I show you the video, I want you to see this government website. This is the Oversight Committee website, a .gov website. We pay for this. The taxpayers pay for this. I want you to see the wording they use on here. This looks like a website that belongs to the DNC. Again, this is being paid for by we the people. This looks like it is straight out of a Democratic playbook, and I'm appalled that my tax dollars are paying for the wording that I'm reading on this website. Now, first up, I want to show you some testimony from Mr. Marty Daniel of Daniel Defense. How many more American children need to die before your company will stop selling assault weapons to civilians and children, the weapon of choice in most mass murders in our country? Congresswoman Maloney, I believe that these murders are local problems that have to be solved locally. I, I believe that okay. uh, my, time, my time is limited uh, and I have to go to the next question. Mr. Daniel and his company are being blamed for what somebody did who is not in their employment, has no affiliation with Daniel Defense, does not work there, has never worked there, has never received anything for free or as payment from Daniel Defense. There is zero affiliation between that killer in Uvalde and Daniel Defense. Yet they are being blamed for what happened. I know that sounds stupid to the average American that has even a double-digit IQ. We're mostly going to look at this and go, really? But not members of Congress because they have an axe to grind and they're looking for that witch. Let's not forget that in Uvalde, a door was left open, which allowed the killer to easily stroll right into the school with his AR-15. At this point, I still don't see what the brand of AR-15 matters. I'd also like to point out that between outside in the parking lot and in the hallway right outside the door where the killer was still killing people, there were 400 or so law enforcement officers there that could have easily intervened at any point and stopped this heinous crime. Let's not forget also, folks, that children who were shot after 77 minutes of bleeding out, somebody could have intervened and potentially and most likely saved lives. But we're looking at blaming a manufacturer of a rifle who had no connection to the person who decided to kill people that day. Let's move on to Mr. Kaloy from Ruger. Mr. Kaloy, how about you? Is there any number of shootings in schools and churches and synagogues that would convince you to stop selling weapons of war to civilians? Respectfully, uh, Congresswoman, I don't consider the modern sporting rifles today that, that my company produces to be weapons of war. And like all Americans, I grieve, you know, when we read about these tragic incidences. You ask what the industry has done and what our company has done and can do. One of the things you reference with this, the Sutherland Springs situation. In that case, the evil person who perpetrated those crimes and committed those murders was allowed to buy a firearm that, frankly, he, sh he should not have been allowed to do. Uh, reclaiming he somehow reclaiming was my time. And I, it seems to me that if a company really cared that its products were being used to kill scores of Americans, it would stop selling them. Same type of situation. They are trying to put this man on the hook for what happened in Sutherland Springs. Now, you guys might remember, I actually wrote about this in my book, How to Make a Monster. I'm going to point this out real quick to you guys. 
You want to see where the failings took place? The failings took place, uh, guess what? At the federal government level. The Air Force failed three other times to notify the FBI of events that should have triggered warnings and barred Kelly from legally obtaining weapons, according to the report. The first bungle chance occurred in June 2011 when Air Force authorities investigated Kelly for allegedly assaulting his stepchild. They collected Kelly's fingerprints but never submitted them to the FBI as required. The second lost opportunity happened in February 2012 after Kelly had been accused of beating his wife. The third time was in June of 2012 when Air Force investigators didn't inform the FBI of Kelly's video confessing that he had injured his stepson. Now, I would like to remind you that Kelly didn't just injure his stepson. He fractured his skull. He beat him so hard he should have killed him. The Air Force never submitted the information to have this man prevented from purchasing a firearm, even though he was clearly a violent offender, because they didn't realize they were supposed to. They just didn't realize that. So here we have a member of Congress blaming a firearms manufacturer for a murder that, again, Ruger has no connection with Mr. Kelly from the Sutherland Springs killing, yet the federal government had everything to do with how this man should not have purchased a firearm, but did, and they didn't do their job, but they're trying to put Ruger on the hook for that. This is absolute insanity. I know Mr. Colloy and Mr. Daniel too, they couldn't say the things that I'm saying. They couldn't because their feet are being held to the fire right now. So I'm saying it for them. This is not right. Mr. Colloy should have been at least felt free to say, wait a minute, you're trying to put Sutherland Springs on me? You guys are the ones that fail the people of Sutherland Springs. I sold a rifle to a guy and he should have never been able to purchase that rifle because your little efforts to prevent him from being able to purchase that rifle failed. You had every single safeguard already in place. And that safeguard failed miserably because you did not do your job. I did my job. I sold my rifle to somebody legally, a dealer. And that dealer sold it to Kelly, according to the law, legally, because they followed the law. They ran a background check on him and nothing the federal government could have put in there to prevent him from purchasing that rifle prevented him. Because guess what? Again, they never entered it. Now, Miss Maloney, stopping these men from talking and saying their piece is disrespectful at best. You know, there are a, a, a slew of words that come to mind to describe this woman. I want to ask this question. Who benefits the most? Think about this. Who benefits the most from firearms manufacturers being able to be sued when somebody legally purchases their product and then uses it to commit heinous crimes? I know we're all thinking the same thing, right? Who benefits the most? Attorneys do. Attorneys do. Who else would? Oddly enough, Miss Maloney, over the last several years, has made a pretty good fortune off of these attorneys. You'll notice that her numbers have gone up considerably each voting cycle since 2016. 2016, she pocketed a nice little $88,000 just for being Miss Maloney from various lawyers and law firms in the United States. The following election cycle, she went up from her $88,000 a year to $104,000. Nice little increase, good pay increase if you can get one like that. However, if you roll up into the 2020 election cycle, she went from $104,000 to almost doubling that to $180,000. Not too bad. Not too bad. That's, that's pretty solid right there, right? Look at this. From 2020, when she made $180,000 just from the attorneys, so far in 2022, she's up to $136,000. Well, she's on pace right now to haul in a nice, cool $272,000 in this year alone. Again, I ask you, who stands to benefit the most by trying to hold these Firearms manufacturers who have done nothing wrong, accountable for what evil people have done. Attorneys do. And clearly, by association, members of Congress do as well.